No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Osanite.
and bursting forth in glorious day out from the great heroes again and as he stands in victory since Christ has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine both with the precious
God, we thank you for your grace. The Bible says that by grace we are saved through faith. And it says that that is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. He says, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. So we are boasting as in what God has done in us, not what we are able to do. For the Bible is very clear, man at his best is altogether vanity. There is nothing we can ever do to please God enough. There is nothing we can ever say to please God enough. Because even our best self does not still match God's standard. The Bible says it was Him in Christ from the beginning of the earth reconciling the world unto Himself. Not imputing sin, but imputing righteousness. That is the ministry of reconciliation. The Bible says, and the church now has obtained the same ministry of reconciling men to God. God is working in us every day. The Bible says, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. He began a great work in your life. And you are on a journey where he lives to perfect you. What a God. What a God. What a God. What a God. Rida go shira baladeko. Bible says being confident of this very thing. I might not be confident about many things, but I'm confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in me he will perform it to the end. That is how, that's my confidence that he began this in me. Share Gosa. Give him a mighty hand clap of praise. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. No, that's for your local chairman. Clap your hands to Jesus. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Kwai. You may take your seats. It's a wonderful day today. Good morning. Wherever you're watching from, I want to welcome you yet to another program. Your Sunday service. I am excited about what God is going to do tonight. We are live on Facebook. So please send a link to somebody and tell them, tune in tonight. You are going to be blessed. We are live on YouTube in high definition. High definition. Clearest picture coming out of the studio is on YouTube. And of course, we're on Fanero Radio. Above all, we are on our own manifest TV. Hallelujah. We're on God TV already, Star Times already, Free to Air already, and many more other platforms are going to come. We're going to go to every platform in Jesus' mighty name. We're also live on Lighthouse Television. So send links right now. Communicate to somebody and tell them, tune in. Tonight, God is going to bless you immensely. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your continuous support to this ministry. Like I promised you, God is doing a lot of things underground, and I'm going to be announcing a few of them a couple of weeks, a couple of days to come, but it is because you are giving. So thank you very much for your generous support. Of course, the platforms of giving, especially if those of you are out of the country, you can give through the website, fenero.org slash give, or through our mobile application, uh, Fenero, which uh, actually we, we so those of you who check out the application, we have um, built it different this time. It's so beautiful and more user-friendly than it has been in the first. Check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. But there are some ones. There are devotionals on that uh, mobile application and, and many other things. And on there, again, is a giving section. And those two, that is the website and the mobile application, except Visa, MasterCard, MTN Mobile Money, Airtel Mobile Money, and M-Pesa for the brothers and sisters who are in Kenya. And of course, those of you who are in Uganda, you don't need to go through the, uh, uh, mobile, uh, the mobile application or the website. You can actually go through directly your MTN Airtel and Airtel merchant codes. They are also flashed on the screens for you. You can use those merchant codes uh, for your giving. Lastly, we have bank accounts with Equity Bank uh, Uganda. The name of the account is Funeral Ministries International. And both the Ugandan shillings and the United States dollar accounts are announced for you. Uh, and I'm sorry for those of you on radio, I might not have time to read these numbers, but even after service, you can always find uh, them online and get your details as the Lord impresses. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the most generous people in the world. And I bless you that you'll continue to supply all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amaze them always to the glorification of your name and expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. No sense said. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is my mic well? I'm feeling something interesting a bit. Okay. Um, our teaching today comes from the book of First Kings, the 18th chapter. First Kings, the 18th chapter. Now, let me give us a background of where, of where we're going to read and where it's coming from. We know, those of us who have read scriptures, we know a man called Elijah, the prophet. And uh, he was a Tishubite, anointed by God to reveal him uh, in the days of their times. And so Elijah... This wonderful prophet has issues with a kingdom of one king called Ahab and his wife called Jezebel. This man called of God to be king went off the way of God through the influence of his wife Jezebel and then they rebelled and brought other gods in and then they started worshipping Baal and many other gods they did. And so we see Elijah raised in a time where Israel was wicked. The wickedness of Israel was vexing the spirit. And so God raises him with such an anointing and power to disprove the way and work of Satan. In fact, at one point, when you read ancient scripts, you will see that the day when Elijah says, 
that from today for the next coming days there shall be no rain. And it takes about three years without rain. When he says there shall be no rain or dew falling on the earth, he just didn't make that statement to show them that he could stop the rain. But when you read ancient scripts, it shows that actually in those days, there were people they called rainmakers. So many other things were being done. So during that time, there were rainmakers. Uh, it was some of the deepest sorcery of that time. So he says, okay, I don't care how many rainmakers are there. At my voice, in the name of the Lord God before whom I stand, he says, there shall be no dew, no rain these years according to my word. So he's saying, let me see anybody make rain. Let me see anybody create a cloud to bring rain. And it was so, there was no rain. So a famine hit Israel. It hit the land and people were starving. Bread and water were scarce. Hallelujah. Because they could not grow plants as they should. So anyway, long time short, God tells him, go back now and appear. He goes through a journey and God tells him, go now and appear before Ahab. I want to go to the next level of displaying my word, my power. So we see uh, this man challenge Ahab. He says, how many prophets do you have? Uh -huh. They had about 850 prophets, Baal prophets. You see? And he says, bring these guys here. Let's call the whole country and let us prove for once who is God. Yeah, I think you've heard of that story, some of you. And then he says, you bring your own bull and I'll bring my own bull. And then the bull, and then we put it on, a, on an altar for sacrifice and the God that answereth by fire shall be God. But when you put that bull on the altar, don't put fire. There's something deep there. <laughs> I cannot go into it. There's a reason why he's saying, put the altar Put the sacrifice, but don't bring the fire. Because it's the responsibility of God to bring fire on every altar. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's so deep. Yes, if you're readers of the Bible, you'll understand it. Those of you who love the word. Anyway, deeper. And then they fail to do that. Elijah, I'm giving us a background here. Because not everybody knows these stories. So Elijah does it. And after they fail, after the Baal prophets fail, Elijah what? calls on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and a fire comes and consumes uh, his sacrifice. And then he tells uh, the, the, this, this, wonder, this wonderful King Ahab and tells him, you know what? Get all these prophets of Baal. And they took them and brought them down to the brook Kishon, and they slew them there. They killed them. About 850 of them were slain. You see? Now, the 41st verse, Elijah says to Ahab, get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. After he has slain all the false prophets, he tells him now, go up, go eat something, rain is what? Is coming. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and the Bible says, and Elijah went up to the top of a camel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. So he tells Ahab, you go eat, drink, Rain is coming, and then he, as a prophet, goes on the mountain to seek the face of God and say to his servant, this is Elijah speaking to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And then he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go up again. Seven times he sends his servant. And it came to pass on the 44th verse, at the seventh time that he said, go behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. There arises a little cloud of the, of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he guarded up his loins and ran before Ahab uh, to the entrance of Jezreel. I'll get to that later. But my emphasis tonight is here. In this portion of scripture, God show us a way, shows us a way of faith. He shows us how faith works. And he shows us the attitude we're supposed to have towards him when we ask for something, when we pray for something. You see, it's important to train yourself in a godly attitude. 
in a godly attitude. To have a consciousness void of offense toward God. That in your prayer, your conscience is agreeable with the way of God. It's a place of exercising yourself. Acts 24, 16 says it. Herein do I exercise myself to have a conscience always void of offense toward God and toward man. You understand? So it's important for you to, to most importantly, not to live in offense toward God. And sometimes living in offense does not mean you stole a car, you told a lie on Tuesday. No, 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 no. Sometimes walking in offense is walking indifferent to God's attitude. Walking indifferent to God's conscience. Some people offend God when they pray. Did you know that? They offend God when they pray. So James says you ask and receive not because you pray amiss. Some of us in our prayer, we actually offend God. I say, oh, this sister, she's a very prayerful woman. This brother is a very prayerful woman. But you see, every time you are praying, you actually do not receive what you are asking for because you are praying in error. You're praying in offense. Somebody shout hallelujah. So a story like this helps us understand what God really intends for you in prayer in connecting to him, in relationship with him. When you ask for something, how are you supposed to ask for it? And what understanding are you supposed to carry? So there's various dimensions in how I could define this kind of concept. And tonight there's a dimension that I want to introduce you to. So this man, Elijah, is instructed by God to go before Ahab. And then after he slays the prophets, like I've said, he tells the guy, go up and drink. Rain is coming. Why? Because it's the one who, who stopped it. Are you hearing me? And then he goes to the mountain to pray. And then he tells his servant, go and check in the clouds. What do you see? First time, the cloud, and the, the servant comes back and tells him, there is nothing. There is nothing. There is no change. I see that you have prayed, but there is no change. Are you hearing me? Nothing has moved. Nothing has shifted. Nothing has left. When I look in the cloud, there is nothing. And that's why many people faint, you know. The moment somebody prays and sees nothing. The Bible says he goes back the second time and he comes back to him and says there's nothing. Elijah continues praying. Third time, there is nothing. Elijah continues praying. Fifth time, there is nothing. Elijah continues praying. Sixth time, there is nothing. Elijah continues praying. Seventh time. Now, many people don't think of the opposite narrative. If at the seventh time that rain had not come, what would Elijah have done? Answer me. He would continue praying. Are you hearing me? He would continue praying. That's an attitude. That's a man who is made up to say, regardless of what happens, I have to get an answer. Somebody shout amen. amen. But I'm going to sound beautiful here. So seventh time, the servant of Elijah goes up and looks towards the sea. And the Bible says, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. It's like a man's hand. There's a little cloud. It is the size of a man's hand. I know many Christians who would say, either that's nothing. Or it's not enough to give the rain I need. Why? Because they have this understanding that for you to have rain, you need a certain kind of cloud. And true, you do need it. But they despise what I call the law of beginnings. There's something in scripture called the law of beginnings. It is fundamental. God has a way he defines beginnings with us and the attitude we are supposed to have when, when he is beginning something. Let's go deep here. So, 
seventh time, seventh time. The number seven, for those of you who are readers of, you know, biblical num uh, numbers, you know that the number seven means complete or perfection. That means that relatively at the seventh time or the perfect time, in the perfect place of faith and prayer, we see a cloud rising from the sea the size of a man's hand. It is possible for a man to be in the most perfect place of prayer with God and see the smallest sign, almost invisible, unrecognizable, or unconsequential. But when a man knows God and understands the attitude of faith, like Elijah did, the moment he was told that there is a cloud the size of a man's hand in the sea. I don't know whether some of you can imagine the size of a man's hand at the distance where the servant of Elijah was to the clouds. Oh, did you get it? When a man says, in the cloud I see the size of a man's hand, that means every time he went up to look, and he found nothing. I believe there was a, a, a communication in his soul telling him, look deeper. Why are you coming every time to look? And I believe that every time he came to look, he was so keen. He knew the prophet. He knew what was on that man. And he knew he would not be wrong. And I believe it took time to look through and look through and look through and look through and look through. And then go back and tell him there is nothing. By the time his servant tells him there is nothing, he's thoroughly checked. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I think he could even be indifferent a bit and say, maybe let me go and encourage him. Probably he can come with this to just encourage him. Maybe this servant probably even thought he was encouraging him by telling him that I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Can you imagine the size of a man's hand when you are on the earth looking at it in the clouds? How small that is. Hey! Can you imagine how small that is? And if it's as small as it was to Elijah it was enough he didn't need a bigger sign he didn't need clouds to darken and let me tell you something that is where the sons and daughters of God fail that particular moment when they look in the cloud and see the size of a man's hand and then they look at the rest they, they don't they don't focus on this they, they don't focus on this size no they look at the rest of the cloud are you hearing me the sign becomes so small and the cloud becomes so big and they look around everything except this sign and then they judge and say it's not working Yes, he prayed for him, but he shook a little. That's not a miracle. Who, who understands what I'm saying? Who, who understands what I'm saying? I have realized that our attitude with faith is wrong in many ways. Some, some people, I know many people who have failed to see God move in their lives because the sign God sends them is too insignificant. For them to follow. Too insignificant. Almost. So small that it's unbelievable. It's so small that they can't believe it. It's so small that they can't believe it. That's the problem. The sign is so small. That they cannot see how such a small thing. Can give rain. And many of them say. Uh -uh. By this time. If God was in this thing. The clouds would be dark. Ha! You're gone. You're gone. Because that's not how faith works. Faith does not wait for the clouds to be dark for it to work. That's not the way of faith. Somebody shout amen. So, we see this servant come back to give knowledge to a man who has a godly attitude, who has a certain consciousness and a way with God. And that man knows that it is going to rain. And then he tells him,
Go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and get thee down that the rain may not stop thee. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, the heaven was black and clouds and wind and there was a great rain. Did you hear that? There was a great rain. There's something I've learned about, about God. If you go from the beginning where he first tells Ahab before he goes to pray, and this is the thing that arrests me most, do you realize Elijah says, I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound. The Bible says, blessed are they that hear the glorious sound. Who has understood it? Blessed are they that hear the glorious sound. You see, there are things that God has designed us to be able to hear when we choose to believe him. And it's so much in us what you are able to hear that defines what your vision is going to become. Some of you underestimate the power of a teacher standing in front of you teaching you because you're hearing words, but you don't understand what sign is reverberating in your spirit. What's, what sound is reverberating in your spirit? Some of you don't discern what God is actually communicating and these words that I'm speaking, what sound they create in the spirit realm for the man who believes. We have all come to a place of agreement that we can only see as far as we are able to hear. We can only see as far as we are able to hear. That's why it's important to understand what you should listen to. There are messages you should not be listening to. There are sermons that you should not be listening to. Because these sounds create the kind of vision and your expectation. They define your prayer life. Without a certain sound, you cannot pray right. Who has understood what I just said? Without a certain reception in the spirit, you cannot pray right. It's not enough to pray. It is enough when you pray after hearing a certain sound. Are you hearing me? Because when you have heard the sound, it doesn't matter how small the sign is. It does not matter how small the sign is. The sound in your spirit, in your heart is loud and you know it somewhere. That is the power that pushes this man to continuously pray because he does not understand why there should not be a sign somewhere when he hears a sound. Let me give you an example. If the Bible says that he was wounded for your transgressions, that's a sound. He was bruised for your iniquities, that's a sound. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. By his stripes ye were healed, that's a sound. Are you hearing me? So you have heard the sound of your healing. You see that? And then you go in prayer. And then you start praying and praying and pray and the pain continues the disease progresses but you are praying you are praying and like the servant of elijah elijah you're checking are you hearing me but what pushes you to continue praying because you heard the sound the sound says by his stripes you were healed who his own self bore our sins in his flesh that we being dead to sins should live to righteousness and by whose stripes first peter 2 24 ye were healed sound of the new birth is that every time i think about divine health the sound of the new birth is that i was healed that's a sound that constantly rings in my ears are you hearing me? That is why when you are in any sort of trouble and you need to fix things, surround yourself around some sounds. Get scriptures for every circumstance. Are you hearing me? Those are sounds. Praise God. That's the right way to pray. 
write seven scriptures of healing and look at them in the name of Jesus are you hearing me or eight or ten and say you said that by your stripes I was healed it doesn't matter what I'm feeling but I feel in my spirit that I was healed somebody shout hallelujah you say that you shall serve the Lord God with all your heart and he shall bless your bread and water and you said he shall take sickness from the midst of you hallelujah glory God and you said that the days of your life he said I will fulfill you told me that I will live a long life that is a very clear sound but I'm still feeling the pain the disease is progressing hey you continue are you hearing me that's the attitude he said it I hear the sound I hear the sound somebody shout hallelujah shout glory to God and if the disease dares to go to progress and even worsen more than ever before worsen too somebody shout hallelujah and say the inhabitants shall not say that I am sick the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven of all their iniquities you say that with long life you shall satisfy me and reveal your salvation to me somebody shout hallelujah glory to God as you continue saying it if the body continues to worsen put your head between your knees and face God and say am I serious why because I see the sound now if in the middle there you see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Change your prayer. Did you hear what I just said? Change your prayer. When, when a sign came, when a sign came, Elijah changed his prayer. He stopped praying. He told the guy, God tell Elijah, run quickly to Jezreel because the rain coming is not going to be able to stop it translated I am healed what if after seeing that sign the next day you slip back that's where the problem is with Christians that's where their problem is the problem is not healing you hear even their conversations today was okay and then the next day it wasn't. And then today became okay. Because you see, this is a fundamental law. You cannot seek God and not find him. He says, if you seek me, you shall find me. When you seek me with all your heart. You cannot seek God with all your heart and not find him. And you cannot find him and the sign is not said. You see what I'm saying? The reason why some people go back is because even their confession and the way they see the sign, the way they see the sign, oh, today I'm a little better. What? Today I'm feeling a little better. That's what they say. Today I'm feeling, yeah, I'm better than yesterday. What? A little, slight improvement, doctor. There's a slight improvement. What? <laughs> what? What? I wish some of you observe me when I'm praying for the sick. How are you feeling? Mm. You're healed. I tell them you're healed. The next prayer, if you've been around me, I don't pray for that man again. You just hear me touch the head, leg, leg and start to say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I, I don't add. The moment he says, there's a sm I'm feeling like, oh, oh, I'm feeling like heat is going through my body. What are you feeling like? I feel like there's a little heat. Oh, I know. Sam's working. The next time I put my hand on that man, I don't say, Re I rebuke. I don't rebuke again. That's offense. Somebody shout hallelujah. I start saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, some of you need to understand what these little small hands in the clouds mean. 
you need to see it and understand it. For some, <laughs> they wanted a visa. She wanted a visa. Huh? And she filled in her papers. And she prayed for that visa. And then they gave her a date for the interview. For some, the interview is the hand in the cloud. For some, the interview, it's a prayer request. Pastor, pray for me. I'm going for an interview. And there, there's another Christian who says, the fact that they have called the light of the world, the fact that they have called a son of God, the fact that they have called a, a man who has the life of God in himself, the fact that they have called me, the anointed one, to stand before them, it is done. All I need is just look at that man's face. Hey! There are people, the moment the interview comes through, they even book the flights and start planning. Guys, I'm coming. And then there are those who still go to go... I'm, I'm, I'm worried about this interview. Have, let me tell you, the Lord is my witness. I have never been interviewed for a job and I failed to get it. it. Has never happened. But I'm interviewed for a job. How? Oh my goodness. I told people once, in one bank I entered and a man gave me a very out of the world target. Told me, can you give me these many billions a year? And I looked at this Indian man and I told him, that's so small. I can do better than that. What? Who are you? I told him, I'm Grace Lubega. Come for your appointment next week. And he hired me. And that year, I did about double. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. So, they, they, this one is saying, I'm praying for the interview. Are you hearing me? Another one knows that's a, that's a hand in the cloud. Prepare. 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 A man comes to Jesus and tells him, I'm unworthy for you to enter my house. I just want you to send it. Just send a word. The fact that I've seen you. The fact that you are able to speak. There's an, somebody recently called me and told me, Apostle Grace, if you step in this hospital, heal. And I told him I'm not coming. Just step here. Me, the moment I see you, I will heal. I told him, look, even the fact that I answered your phone. A Muslim woman, a, a man, there's a man of God who gave a Muslim woman my, my number and she had a swollen leg. I don't know if you know that story. You were there when they are giving, the, the, the man of God was giving the testimony because the man of God gave the testimony. And he told her, I know a man who has a healing anointing. He's born again, you're Muslim, but don't worry, call this man. This woman called me. I said, hello? I hear a woman screaming in the background. The phone is off. It's a few days later that I learned, her leg shrunk back. She even feared calling me. She feared calling me. You heard of the story of the group in Barara. They got a blind man and took him to my what? Poster. You remember when we were having a crusade? They took a blind man to a poster and told him, see, and the man saw. So what do you mean I need to come to your hospital? Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. You have to get to a point where you don't need God to show you so much to believe him. You just need a little hand in the, in the cloud to just see a little size. You, you don't need so much. There are people who say, the fact that I've arrived in this service, I'm not going to die. That's a man of faith. And then another one comes in the same service and says, lay your hands on me. I'm going to die. In the same service, where one, a woman saw Jesus pass by and she said, if only I don't need his phone number, I don't need his WhatsApp page, I don't need to go on Facebook, I don't need to have a special appointment with him, 
I just need to touch the hem of that man's garment and I shall be made whole. We found a guard in a, in a, in a, in a, there's a hotel called Royal Suits. I don't know who I was with. Was I with Mark? I think I was with Mark. And this man saw me. He says, Apostle Grace, I have testimony for you. And then it was a wedding. So I come out and say, huh? Tell me, do you know I got your sermons and I put them on, your, on my phone and I started listening to these sermons. I saw the phone. It was a very old, very old phone. I don't even think it can hold two sermons. I think he had like two or three of them. But he puts them on a the phone, my sermons. He puts them on a the phone. And then he said, his mother, I think, was diagnosed with cancer. And she went to hospital and nothing, there's nothing they could do. So the guy says, he said, Mama, I'm coming to heal you. I think I was, Julius, were you there? He said, I'm coming to heal you, Mama. Then he got his mobile phone. He reached his mother and put on my salmon. And he put it on her breast where the cancer was. Says, don't worry, healing is taking place. The mother healed. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So the guy told me, now, I don't waste my time. If she feels headache, I just put. Oh, my legs are paining. I just put your salmon and I put on her legs. That's a man of faith. And somebody needs an appointment with you to, to be healed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, don't limit God. Don't limit God. How, how did I begin preaching? How did I begin my ministry? It was that little small beginning I was invited in a Baptist church to sing. I couldn't even lead song. So I stood behind like this. I backed up. That's how I began ministry. I'd never stepped on an altar in my life. So a guy is somewhere in the back. Somebody's leading and he's singing. I'm even shy. I'm closing my eyes. But God is saying something has begun. You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. The Bible says in Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the 10th verse, if you leave the New Living Translation, New Living Translation, Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the 10th verse, it says, do not despise these small beginnings. Somebody shout hallelujah. For God rejoices to see the work begin. Oh, God, the Bible says, rejoices to see the work begin. Let me explain this. The moment you applied for that visa, and then they called you for the interview, God said, ha ha ha, they've called my daughter. Do you understand what I just said? You don't need to know more than that. And then you say, pray for me. They've called me for the interview. Then God is like, she spoiled the flow. Keep with it. Tell your neighbor, keep with it. Type, on, type it on YouTube and say, keep with it. Somebody shout hallelujah. For some of us, that small beginning was that application we put in. And they said, we've accepted you. Come and, come, come and start your senior one with us. Some of us, oh, it's those little small things. They didn't look big at that particular point. But the fact that they even said hello. The, the fact that they bypassed us and they said hello and they went away. For us it was a sign. You say, why did he say, he say hello this time? Why did he turn my side this time? Why is he the one watching my TV now? Why is it that they tuned in today? For us it was enough. Somebody shout amen. I heard the sound years ago. And we were in a 50 uh, people room. I told my friend Robert, I didn't, have any, I didn't even have money to rent a building. And Robert said, no, be using my building on Saturday. I don't use it, I'll be using it on Sunday. And on that Saturday, in Robert's building, no machines, no chair, no camera, no nothing. Pastor Emma is seated here. The Miriams are seated. About 30 or 40, 50 kids there. And I start telling them, I hear the sound of TBN. We, we were in Mukono. We were in Mukono. There was nothing. Child of God, believe him. Believe him. 
I said, I tip, we are going on TPN. And I told them there are people watching us across the world. I want you to wave to those that are watching us. There was no camera. There was no piano. There was no choir. There were only plastic seats on a hot Saturday. And I told them, wave to those that are watching us. Wave to the people watching us across the world. Tell them we love them. There was nothing but the fact that I had 30 people, 40 people listening to me. I knew something had begun. I knew something had begun. Glory to God. Yeah, we didn't have a stadium, but something had begun. We didn't have equipment. We were using our mouths, but something had begun. We sat on border borders, those little bikes. Eh? They put you on a border border and they take you 40 kilometers inside Gerenge. You're going to preach to people who came driving, but you have this joy in you. Why? Because you hear certain sound that certain people are not able to hear. I remember coming from my hostels every night. We preach up to 2 a.m. Then you go back home and you enter the room and there's already you know, probably a barn and water. Oh, I know many days I, I fed on a barn and water. Why? Because the pocket money daddy gave me, I gave it to a boy to go to school. And the little that I, I, I preserved, I started to buy buns and water. And I eat, eat my buns at two. And after eating my buns and my stomach is full, I speak in tongues up to 3 a.m. And I wake up in the morning happier than I went to bed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then the next day you preach the same gospel. And I hear Christian giving up quickly. And I don't understand you. For us, even an invitation was a sign. Whether the church was poor, whether you were paid an allowance or not. I mean, uh, what do they call it? A love offering or not? It did not matter. One time I remember, I took a car, paid my fuel, close to about 300,000 shillings, went to Kayunga, and, and I entered this overnight. And they bought a man crippled in both feet. Both feet. As I'm preaching faith, they threw the man on the pulpit. It was the beginning. I asked the man, do you believe you can walk? And he said, yes, I believe I can walk. So I tell him, get up in the name of Jesus and walk. And the man walked and started dancing and dancing. And I told him, I'm taking your cane back to Kampala. He had not walked for a long time. He got a disease and it crippled him. I, both feet, he was seated like folded. Both feet were folded. And after that service, the pastor gave me 20,000 for love offering. I didn't complain. Because for me, money didn't drive me. The fact that I was given an opportunity to speak about Jesus Christ, I knew something was beginning. I could not explain how far it was going, but I kept hearing the sound telling me of the increase of his government and the peace thereof. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice. And he said, and the zeal of God shall perform this. I kept hearing the sound telling me, my zeal will grow you. My zeal will prosper you. My zeal will multiply you. My zeal will draw men. My zeal will reward your faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. I remember they brought me a lady who was dying. I prayed for her. She died. But the fact that they had considered me. <laughs> Listen, the fact that they had, of all the people they could think of, they thought of a crazy boy who had no record of raising dead people, but at least they believed that he could raise a dead person or heal a person. It was enough. You pray for the next person. You start preaching. If you, have, if you have the dead, call me. And they believe you. Next thing you know, they're calling you. There's another dead person. You pray for them. They don't come back. You pray for another one. But for me, the fact that they could think as that crazy. I just told God the fact that they called me. You know what to do. And I will never forget. I'm driving one place and they call me a kid is dead. The mother tells them, before you take this boy to the mortuary, he was born dead. She said, before you take this boy to the mortuary, 
call this man. So I think the nurse called me thinking I'm the father. They called me, called me. I'd, I'd failed to pick it at the first time. And then later I, 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 I pick it. And I saw me, oh, sorry. Uh, we've been calling, calling. You know, we are sorry. We're trying to comfort this woman. She has lost the child. You've lost the baby. I said, which baby? No, no, there's a young boy here. The lady's called who? Jennifer. She, the kid is dead. So they carry the boy and take him to the mortuary. So I say, where is the baby? Are you near the baby? The nurse says, no, 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 no. They've taken the kid to the what? To the mortuary. I told him I'm going to raise that boy. The fact that... <laughs> Who understands what I'm saying? They hung up. And I say, but you boy. I communicated to the young boy. I said, but you boy, can't you wake up? In Jesus' name, wake up. And in about five minutes, they called me on phone screaming. As they were putting the kid into the mortuary, locking, the boy coughed back to life. My God, I expanded. I walked so big. I walked so big. Why? Because I understood. I understood this. I respect the love beginnings. There's a reason why you're the one they are calling to pray for them. Even if somebody says, you pray for us, even if they are joking, the fact that they joked on a prayer, you praying, that's a hand in the cloud, brother. Stick on that and say, I'm going for this. Somebody shout hallelujah. You might have nothing in your pocket and a friend comes and jokes and says, hmm, you look rich these days. Woo! Did you understand that? And then somebody says, ah, ah, no, come on. I'm, oh, how can you say that? <laughs> how can you say that? The moment that even in the joke you looked rich, there's a reason why in the joke you didn't look poor. Woman, that's a hand in the cloud. Stick on that and change your prayer. Don't pray again for money. Somebody came to me and told me, pray for me, apostle. People, every time people look at me, they say I'm rich, but I don't see money in person praying for me. I told that woman, what's wrong with you? Do you know how many people look poor? Do you know how many people look poor? That's a hand there. It's in the cloud. It's a sign. Start preparing yourself like rich men think. Start building like rich men. Start planning like rich men. Start thinking like a rich man. The moment they can say that, it's enough. It's enough. How can they say, you look beautiful? And then you go in the mirror. And you say, what? That's a hand in the cloud. But he was joking, he was playing with you. Why would he play on beauty? Slap somebody and tell them, get it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't need so much sign. You don't need so much sign. You just need a sign as little as this. I'm believing God for this. You just need a little, little slight thing and then run with it. That's what Elijah is, starting to, is, is trying to teach us here. That when you have heard enough sound, it doesn't matter how small the evidence, you run with it. You run with it. I remember the first day I was invited on radio. The first day I was invited on radio station. And I stood in front of that mic. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I came up that radio station, I'll never forget. Went outside of it. And I screamed, I've conquered the media world. <laughs> <laughs> One program like that. Uh -uh, I had conquered. Some of you don't get it. Some of you don't get it. I had conquered. You could not take it out of my head. I had conquered. Because I went for a radio program. And then another Christian says, I was just a program. Yeah, I went on one or two. You know, it was just a program. No, it was not just a program. It was a door. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
it was not just 15 minutes of come and say hello it was an opportunity the fact that i just start to look understand the law of beginnings the moment you enter there god has celebrated it somebody shout hallelujah the first time i went on television i knew i had conquered tv i knew it i knew it i knew it some of us we don't need to even do a show no they just need to be reading the news and in reading the news, there's a reporter saying, here at Campolo Road, that the cars are stuck, there's a traffic right there, and then somehow you pass and they say, that's Irene. <laughs> who, 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 who? The fact that your face featured when the reporter, that that's where you get it from. The, oh, that's where you get it from. And say from here. Go back home and tell him I'm a TV personality. I have a spiritual daughter, their grandfather, you, a Muganda man, I believe, went to study in Germany and the thing got married there and then returned. Recently, she was telling me, one of her daughters, her daughters, she said, we well, have German. So she said, these kids are black, how are they half German? No, because our grandfather studied in Germany. <laughs> what? <laughs> Such faith. Now get it out of there and put it in the right place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Show glory to God. So, I want to finish because I'm enjoying this so much. Job 8, 7 says, Though thy beginning was small, Though thy beginning was small, he said, yet thy latter end, he didn't say will be. He didn't say might be. He did not say could be. He said, it should be greatly increased. The fuck that the begin, that's the law of beginnings. The fuck, that's why when you read scriptures like, he that began a good work, did he begin it? Did he begin it? Yes. He says he shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. That is how I know that I will never fall. That's how I know. Because I didn't call myself. I was in my mother's womb. And the man consecrated me and anointed me. He began that work. He began that work. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says he will perform it. The only thing important here is that if God has begun, that is how I know nothing can shake me. Nobody can shake me. Nothing, read my lips, can threaten me. Because in all the versions of myself I ever knew I could be, I never thought I was going to be a preacher of the gospel. I didn't even like preaching. Somebody shout hallelujah. But this guy said start. And I took it with grace and I received it with faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So every journey, every step in the journey, I just look back and see this far how he has brought me. And I see the things he's, he's built out of me and what these things have done in the lives of people. And I'm like, how? How? Of all people, Grace Lubega. Yes, Grace Lubega. I don't even know how it happened, but it did. That I just opened my Bible and a man just sticks there and he can't stop. You preach for one hour and somebody says, was it 10 minutes? Why? Something in there is working. God is performing his work. The, the beginning will be or could be small. But the Bible says your end should greatly increase. There's a should. There's a fixed command there that favors you. That advantages you to finish at the end. So you don't need to see so much. I told people the story of how my father told me, you're old, get out of my house. And I had nothing. I'll share a full story one day when he's not here, when he's, when he's home. But today he's in studio, so let me not say a lot. My dad is here. <laughs> he might look at me with this eye of, really? Do you have to say that about me? <laughs> And I went to my room, 
say, God, I'm a preacher of the gospel. And I have nothing in my name. Why? Because every salary I used to get, I used to give it. Every salary I used to get for five, six years of my banking life, I used to give it. So my dad is like, what's wrong with this boy? No car, no nothing. He just has suits and ties. What's wrong with you? Get yourself a place to live. You're old. Look at you. You have beards. What? So I went to my house. I said, God, do a miracle. God, do a miracle. God, do a miracle. And I promised myself that I was going to buy a point of contact. And I will speak to that point, point of contact every day. That man, that month I got my salary. I got about 380,000, 360,380. And I went into an Indian shop and I looked for the point of contact that fitted in that price and it was a microwave. LG to be exact. And I came to this thing and I said, how much is that thing? 400 and something. I said, no, 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 no. I don't know that for it. We negotiated, he gave it to me. I got my little microwave. I'll teach about this microwave. Some of you need to understand how to build things. And I put it in, at, the, at the feet of my bed, just next to the door. And every time I woke up and I remembered my father's words, I look at this microwave and I tell it, we're going somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm building with you. Out of you shall come cars, houses, lands, properties, buildings. Not you, you're, you're the point of contact. You're my beginning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Next day, nothing. You look in the cloud, nothing. You come back to this microwave and tell it, yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It must work. I was just one day, I was on my bed. I tell this story always and a voice said, the sun shall never go down without a man blessing you. And since that time, the sun has never gone down without a man putting money in his hands. It has never gone down. I still have my microwave because I don't despise small beginnings. I kept it. I don't use it for food, no. Memory. Anytime something disturbs me, I go back to that thing and tell it, you know where we come from, bruh. You, you, you understand. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But we all had our own beginnings. And you could, you could take it lightly and tell it, how, how can this thing build out of nothing? But you see, God doesn't care how it begins. He just cares that it has begun. Tell your neighbor, begin from somewhere. Yes. Begin from somewhere. Begin from somewhere. And know that, and, and recognize that beginning, however small. For some of you, that beginning is going to be a job paying you 10,000 shillings or 20 or 200 or 100,000. And then you say, ah, who works for that little money? My first job, I made 100,000 a month. My first job, that was true. But the fact that somebody could consider me to work for them. <laughs> I knew we were beginning some. Somebody shout hallelujah. God was building something. Don't despise small beginnings. Oh, for some of you, that small beginning is that 10, 15 years of wanting to build and you failed to get the money. And God just wanted you to buy the first strip of bricks. And what is the sign? I spoke about it. <laughs> I preached it in a sermon. Now you sit there and start waiting for money. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. For some of you, that humble beginning, I remember every time I used to finish service, I used to say, when, every time I went for weddings, eh, and I do that, it's a culture I do. I usually come with cakes and I say, those who I want to marry this year, come and cut this cake. And some look at me like I'm joking. And some come and cut. And I'm realizing, all the people that have been cutting cake are getting married. It began from where? I didn't rebuke a generational curse. You just cut cake. Some of you need to understand how instructions work. Somebody shout hallelujah. You need to understand how things go in the kingdom of God. Some of you, it's that little thing that looks insignificant, but God has looked at your heart of faith and you said, because you are able to believe me this far, let's go. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
For some of you, it shall be a bad school. Perhaps you'll go in a very, very remote school. After COVID, perhaps the, the, your school closed and you're going to go in a very, very cheap school and, 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 and may, probably you're going to send your children and, 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 and you say, how, where, where, where do I begin from? But it's enough. It's enough. You underestimate the language you're speaking, but it began with an alphabet, A. Then you said A, B, B, C, D, 26 letters. You started speaking them and then you connected, then you understood the vowels and then consonants and what, pronouns, what, things. The language grew. Now you write sentences. You read sentences. You understand books and, 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 and you're building the, round around, the world around you with this language. But it began with a small letter, A, A. That's why the Bible says he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last because he's the God of beginnings. He was there when it began. You didn't go to school and study all of this English to fail to get a job. When you understand that, you can never look for a job. It will look for you because it has the responsibility to fulfill the work of God to the end. Who has understood it? For some of you, it was that proclamation the pastor made that day and say this is your year where the light of sonship is going to shine on your spirit <laughs> and somebody got it and said mm, this is my beginning somebody shout hallelujah for some of you you see one time I went in a in a church one of those interesting churches as it had been as invited I'm going to share this story and I'll finish and then <clears throat> I'm teaching the church and I'm teaching the church. And then I walked to this lady, seated in front. I didn't have a clue she was an elder. And then I walked her straight in the eye and I looked at her straight and I said, some of you, you are breaking the church of Jesus Christ through gossip. Everybody knows you for gossiping. Why do you gossip about people? And people in the church start laughing. They start laughing. Little did I know that the whole church had issues with her gossiping. They had to summon the pastor of the church. Why do you first tell preachers our problems and then invite them? Because they assumed that the guy who invited me first told me that you see that woman in the corner here, that's the chief gossiper. No, it wasn't. But the fact that the Spirit of God would direct me to the person God is speaking to, even when a pastor mentions your name, even when a person points at you when they are preaching, understand it's no mistake. Why did he look my direction when he made that statement? Why did he look at the machines? Small beginnings. Somebody shout hallelujah. Small beginnings. Why did he call me? Why is he with me? Why does he, why does he even have my number? Why? Why did he text Small little things. The fact that <laughs> some of your small beginnings are going to be so small and they'll be close to insignificant. And I say, this is a year where you'll, you, you'll have a new beginning. And somebody says, amen. And next week, they'll buy you a mobile phone, which is new. And perhaps you've not had a mobile phone for four years, a new one. Then you look at it and say, ah, I thank God that I have a new phone. No, no, it's not a new phone. Brother, it's a hand in the clouds speaking of a rain to come. The fact that you got that mobile phone and they bought it for you that very week they preached. Some people lose it there. No, that's the moment you lambano it, get a hold of it aggressively, go with that phone in prayer, put it in your armpits and say, Father, living proof that you have begun something. Now I speak in my marital destiny. I speak in my financial destiny. I speak in my vision and dreams. I speak at my job and ministry. Oh, I pray for my children. If you learn to pray like that, you'll see God. You'll see God. You'll see God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Get to your feet, those of you who are in studio, those of you who are home. Let's just raise our voice and start praying right now. Let's pray. Come and raise your voice and let's pray.
Let's pray. Let's pray. God, I look to you. I want the overwhelming vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. You give me To see things like you do God, I look to you You're where my help comes from You give me wisdom You know just what to do Yeah, yeah Oh, oh. Come on, pray Come on, pray Pray, and I'll love you, be you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my sheep. I will love you, Lord, my I will love you, my God. I will love you, my sheep. God begin with somebody today may have prayed for so long for something give them a sign however small and give them the wisdom to design it 
Radego Shana Barade Broad, building us the right attitude. Makato Baradega Shonda Rabada de Brodogo Zikata Barata. Rete Bago Shana Baradego Santori Barade Garabaroko Shana Barade. Something is moving in your family. Marade so paradego bradego sha. Zeke prateke paradego zandoro borodogo shata paradege. Something is moving in your marriage. Mareto shinda da paradega brodogozo. Reta o marico destiny. Mande kosa paradege se. Zo bradego sha parade brodogo zara paradege sa. Something is working right in your body from today. Marade kosa. If you are sick in your body of a disease curable or incurable, I Come money to leave your body now. Redabago Shata Badego Santa Paradega. May the power of God come over you and heal you in the mighty name of Jesus. May the glory of God work in your life like never before. Zando Baradego Pradego Sikata Paradega. Redego Santa Baradego Brodolobogo Zikata Parade. Radego Santa Barade Brodogo Zikarabate. Rondeke Sikata Padeko Shara Barade. Radege Sira Bandego Shira. Baradeke Prodogo, Rindago Sata Badigo Shanda, Se Parataka Baratarapa, Zere Porodogo Shindara Barade Cosa, Ratabadega Shonta Parade, Robla da Gazegete Parato, Rita Magosa Bade Cosa, Zima Teco Bare, something is happening, Redego Shanda Baradego, Retebogose, I feel it, something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. So tama de gapora, rema de go shanda badega, so para to bara de geba, robro do go zima te bade go zande, o saba de kapakata, rata badaga junta, mare pra de go zera, rato made go sha, sama te prodogo, maro pra de gonda, zara bade go sha, so pando go sika, reta gazo, rada bagate, ro pra ne go zite, rate go shinde, so pridige bate, ro Made gota, harade gazonda, repradega, robradaga, sopradaga, soparando, ziparata, raprade, sobadeka, somaradega, repradegosa, rande koshataba, reparadegosa, rabadegata, robato madega, somadegosa, zamaretaba, robradegosande, soparadagata, ratabagadega, sopre negosinde, ngoza paradeka, prade. De gozan de kotapa, repara da gazo barata, so bara de gozara mara barata. Come on, pray. Ma sopa, rebade, so bara de ke, so bara de go, rima do gota, rebade gosa, zaparande, mo para taba, robo do gozo, rata bade ke, so bade kosa, zapara tega, so mara borede, so parando, so pradega. Zara parade, robla de goza, rama de gozende, pada gazata, shama tepa, sopro dogora, libare de go. Jesus, you're good. Jesus, you're wonderful. Jesus, you're awesome. Rena bagosa, you're merciful God. You're a gracious God. You are a loving God. You're a faithful God. You are a forgiving God. You give us chances to begin again. You give us opportunity to do it again. Once more, reba nego shin, so pradege tepa, so mara tabara dega, redege sha, ho sa para da baga, ro pradege shinde, ho sa para deke, pronaga di bara de, zama te katala, so poro dogo sant, so pradege bara de, ro pradege mara dego sh, ma te bara daka, so poro dega shon, zika po te pradege, ro poro dogo segete, rada bago shala, God you. Good God, where are the Yesu? Reba de go sinda, so prade ge parade, robo do go shanta, rata ba de ge te. Oh Sharaba, you despise not the small beginnings. You rejoice at the beginning of a work. It doesn't matter where it begins. It doesn't matter how it begins. Some people's marriages began poor. Some people's marriages were not the best. Some of you, your weddings 
were not the best but God rejoiced at that beginning that was consecrated at the altar some of you your childbearing was not perfect but God rejoiced that your womb had begun to carry something some of you your job has not been the best but God rejoiced that you had that first appointment some of you your opportunities have not been as favorable but God rejoices that they considered you God does not despise humble beginnings God does not despise humble beginnings may God give you a better beginning may God take you to the next level may that which was a small sign turn into rain may it turn into torrential rain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may this heal your famine may you be delivered in your droughts may the dry places of your life be filled with spiritual rain tonight for the Bible says that the glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of the former he says he brings a new rain 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 in the place of the former something new is beginning in your house you're going to the next level for the things you've been praying let me declare tonight that today is the seventh time today is the seventh day today is the seventh year today is the seventh month today is the seventh opportunity I decree and I declare that a sign is going to come in a few days and a few weeks and out of that sign a great rain a great answer a great deliverance a great breakthrough a great healing a great transformation a great redemption a great resuscitation a great renovation a great revival is going to come out of this and you're going to look at this day from this day and testify that your God is a God who answers by fire he is true carry that attitude carry that attitude and praise God give him a mighty hand of a praise clap for him come on celebrate him like he has done something celebrate him like you see the sign Celebrate him like you understand what he has done. Come on. No, no. Not like celebrate him the way Elijah cuddled himself and started running, knowing very well that rain was coming. And the Bible says he ran in the strength of the spirit and overtook chariots. It's in this celebration strength that you'll overtake those who are on horses. It's in this celebration strength that you'll overtake those who are on planes, that you'll overtake those who are driving, that you'll overtake those who seem running faster than you as you celebrate you're running faster than Ahab's chariots father we thank you father we glorify you God your Lord celebrate God thank you Lord you'll enter Jezreel before them that are driving you'll enter Jezreel before them that are riding on horses you'll enter Jezreel before them that have networks in government you'll enter Jezreel before them that are educated and have master's degrees you'll enter Jezreel before them who gave birth early you'll enter Jezreel before them who got married quicker you'll enter Jezreel before them who think they were stronger than you for the rest is not to the swift neither the battle to men which are strong he has told us that bread is not to wise men skill riches are not to men of understanding favor to men of skill but time and chance happens and tonight happened to be your day give him a mighty hand of praise glory to God glory to God hey thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord if you have never given your life to Christ I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior just repeat this words after me just repeat this words after me this sermon was your sign you don't need more you don't need more you don't need cameras on you to get born again you don't need men's attention. God is calling for your heart. And today is the right day. Just repeat this as after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you. Because you shed your blood for my sins. And you were raised for my glory.
tonight. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. If you've made that prayer, you are born again. Please go on for another dog slash salvation. Oh, call me on plus two five six two hundred triple nine four zero five. I want to hear from you. Send you a few things to help you understand what it means to be born again. And those of you who have received testimonies tonight, send them on Fernando Dog slash testimonies or call us on plus two five six two hundred triple nine four zero five. I have a prayer platform on Fernando Dog slash prayer, and in the uh, mobile application, in the about section, or actually when you go on the mobile app, I think the top left corner when you click there, there's a place where you can it, it can it gives you options to actually send your 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 prayer requests. I thank God for what he's doing. I know that I'll see you again on Thursday. Carry somebody on Thursday spiritually. Get one person and some watching with this person. Either with them physically or send them a link and tell them I, I'm going to watch the next Thursday with you. And God will bless you. I hope to see you sh soon. Keep shining. Keep living for God. God bless you. This podcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manners.